What is going on everyone? My name is Marcel Flores. Welcome to One Dapper Street and oh my god, it's getting hot out there. And yes, summer is in full swing while America is basically closing back down, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk to you guys about how to upgrade your fits in the summer, how to look your best, and how to do that without overheating. Whether or not you can fully enjoy the summer, I just hope you take a little something away from today's video. We have a lot of ground to cover today, so let me hop right in. The first thing I want you guys to consider is choosing your fabrics wisely. If you find yourself in 100 degree heat and you're wearing a merino wool sweater, you did something wrong and you're gonna feel it. So let's start off with the most obvious one, cotton. Cotton comes in all types of variations, so make sure if you do go for cotton, that you go for a lighter weight version of it. So nothing too thick, just so you have a little bit of breathability, but cotton is a great basic choice for the summer. Another obvious one, it's a proper summer fabric, and that's linen. I have a whole video on linen up. If you missed that, check that out right here. But linen is fantastic in the summer, but it has a very specific look. So I don't know about you, but I don't want my entire wardrobe to be linen. Well, I really don't know about you. If you want to do that, cool with me. But let's cover a few other options, what you can choose in stores to make sure that you look and feel great. There's another classic summer fabric that's called seersucker. But seersucker is really hard to find great pieces that don't make you look like you walked out of the 1920s. So make sure that if you do, try and opt for something that's a solid color with a seersucker fabric, just very subtle. And then you have an excellent shirt, or I mean, in my case, shirt but an excellent piece for the summer. Silk is another great one, but you run into a couple issues there. It feels phenomenal when you're like rightly acclimated, but for one, you've got the price point, and two, once you start sweating, it gets a little bit sticky and it starts sticking to you, so there's actually a fabric called viscose, which I'm sure some of you may have heard before, and viscose is a beautiful stretch between how cotton feels and how silk looks, so that's an excellent choice for fabrics when it comes especially to summer shirting. Then we've got bamboo and bamboo lyocell, which is for one sustainable. It's a great, great option for the summer. It's moisture wicking, it's thermal regulating. One of my favorites when it comes to knitwear in the summer. And lastly, we have denim's aesthetic brother, the chambray shirt. I'm personally not the biggest fan of chambray, so I don't even have a piece in my closet, but it looks like denim, kind of. If you look closer, it looks a lot more loose. It's a lot more breathable, a lot more lightweight but that is a great summer denim alternative for you guys. So now that we covered fabrics, let's talk about the proper styling. And I really want to talk about one item in specific, and that is a white tank top, a white ripped tank top. I love mine from Uniqlo because, well, several reasons. One, I'm wearing a dress shirt right now, right? But underneath, I'm wearing this tank top. Yes, it does add a little bit of heat, which is unfortunate, but to keep you looking good and fresh throughout the day, if I want to start sweating, you're gonna start seeing sweat stains in my armpits. It's just bound to happen. But a tank top or an undershirt can actively help prevent that. So in terms of looking better, you're probably better off wearing an undershirt and adding that extra layer. But you can also wear this ripped tank top as a stylistic piece. I'm wearing it on my body and then I'm wearing a button down shirt, like a casual relaxed shirt on top of it, but I completely unbutton it. That allows for some airflow and it's a really nice and cool look. Once it gets a little bit colder, like say you're by the ocean, it gets colder at night, you just button it up and you have those two layers to actually keep you warm. So I think that's a great one stylistic choice, but two also utilitarian choice. Lastly, we also need to talk about colors. There are some colors that you should stay away from if you tend to sweat a lot in the summer and you don't want your sweat stains to be too visible, and that's light colors. That hesitation just now was because, yes, in the summer you do want to wear light colors because they retain heat less, but Darker colors are just better in hiding any potential sweat stains. So really gotta walk the line depending on where you're going, but a gray t-shirt, if you sweat a lot, tends to not be at all a good idea. If you guys wanna see a proper summer, hot, hot summer outfit video, leave a comment down below. Today is a little bit more about styling tips and like things I want you to know, like base knowledge that you can integrate as we then together build our summer wardrobe but if you want that, please leave a comment down below so I know that I should shoot that for you guys. Before we move on to an expansive list of accessories that I think are essential to add flair to your summer outfit, I wanna talk about our skin. It's not just about having the right fit on to look your best. You wanna have healthy, happy skin, if you will. So SPF is absolutely non-negotiable. We need it around the year, honestly, but in the summer especially. So find a moisturizer with daily SPF. Find an SPF if you're planning on exposing any other part of your body to the sun. Make sure that you protect yourself. Not only does it protect you from sun burning, but also from sun damage long-term. So you wanna keep your skin looking healthy into old age. 
after you've been in the sun, we have another thing to talk about that I think a lot of guys still don't know how important it is, and that is moisturizing. For one, you should be moisturizing daily, period but especially after you've been in the sun. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I personally love the Heat Time sheet masks, which are moisturizing, anti-aging masks that have been made for men. They're organic, uh, smell amazing, look cool. Like to me, it's just fun. It's always like I've become this little super villain or something, but they help incredibly much when I've been in the sun a little bit too much because there's so much aloe in there along with a bunch of other great ingredients. So that's a big recommendation from me to you guys, check them out. Then I recently found at CVS this brand called Sunburnt, which is really just an aloe gel, but it's a non-sticky gel. So super, super hydrating once again, but usually why I don't put it on as much as I probably should is because it gets so sticky. So this product actively cancels that out. So make sure that you protect yourself and afterwards or generally moisturize so you keep your skin looking as best as you can, as good as you can, as good as you can. Now let's move back into fashion and look at some pieces that you can add to your outfit without adding any heat, and that's accessories. First and foremost, you need a nice pair of sunnies. Once again, for protection from those evil UVB sun rays, and no, a cheap pair of sunglasses most likely will not protect your eyes from those dangerous rays. If anything, they're gonna make you more susceptible to the damage because they open up your pupils more because it's darker, but then they don't filter out those rays, so please try and invest in a good pair of sunglasses. I personally like to have at least three sunglasses in rotation, just because I like matching them with my outfit, so I want to go for a black one, a brown one, and then usually a metal framed one, the first two being usually acetate, and that's just because I want something that's a bit more elegant, something that goes with earth tones, and something that goes with an achromatic outfit, so make sure not to skimp out, Obviously there's Jade Black, which I've talked about on this channel, one of my absolute favorites, and you've got classics like Ray-Ban. There's a bunch of great options out there that don't break the bank in designer price points, but you know, look great and are a great addition to your outfit. And that's how I want you to think of sunglasses. Not just utilitarian, this makes me see better. I want you to think of it as part of your outfit. Then we've got the right jewelry. Finding the right jewelry can be really, really difficult, especially in a nice price point that is actual silver. So let's talk through a few categories like watches, necklaces, bracelets, and rings. And I'll mention a few of my favorite companies where I shop those things from. Let's actually get started with the watch right away. I think uh, a watch is super simple, super essential, and not just a summer detail. I don't wanna spend too much time talking about it. If you guys want, I'd love to make a video for you on like non-luxury watches that you can get overall. But I think you guys know a watch is a great addition to an outfit already anyway, so on to the next one. Let's talk about necklaces. I think necklaces are something that a lot of guys just don't necessarily wear because it can be really tricky. It's, it's tricky to find like the right piece for you so you feel comfortable and it reflects your personality. Whether it's something a bit more minimal like the silver necklace from Tevin Vincent or a bit more of a statement piece like this necklace right here from Serge Denim. Both these companies are owned by owned and operated by two friends of mine. I love both of their products. I want to mention them a little bit more. But it's really up to you whether you want to go for something more statement, something more minimal that you can wear on a daily basis. But I encourage you to have some fun with the necklace because it really does add a lot to your outfit. And I personally opt for silver. That goes for all of my jewelry, just because it goes a little bit better with my skin tone. If you want to see my video on color theory, including skin tone, links right here. That's been up for a while now. With bracelets, I usually go for one of the following three. Number one, leather bracelets. Number two, beaded bracelets. Number three, sometimes a cuff. This one right here, for example, is from M. Cohen. I really love the wraparound green color leather. I think it's a really nice and masculine look. Then any beaded bracelets, you can have several of those to pick up the colors in your outfit. If you guys watch my channel regularly, you know that I love color combinations and picking up colors in different parts of the outfits. So beaded bracelets are excellent for that. And then last but not least, cuffs. This feather cuff is from Serge Denim. Once again, I absolutely love it. It's a really nice statement piece. So you can have fun with bracelets. Don't overdo it. And I personally like either balancing it on the right wrist if I have a watch on, or sometimes adding a bracelet to the wrist that I'm already wearing the watch on. Next up, we've got rings, and rings are arguably one of the more uh, conflicted areas of men's jewelry, I think. They can be very, very specific. So if you haven't dabbled in rings, maybe just wear one or two, whether it's something larger, something smaller. I personally really like sterling silver rings. So even if I lose them, it's not like I've thrown, you know, a proper silver ring away. It's 
you know, usually between 50, 60 bucks, usually you should find something really, really nice. But if you want to go for the bad boy look, and I really don't like the bad boy thing, like what's a bad boy anyway, but if you want to go for like a more rugged look, you can also start stacking your rings and going really heavy. I am known to, from time to time, wear way too many rings if you ask a lot of the people <laughs> probably watching this video, but I like it and that's what fashion is all about and especially with something like rings, I think it's about expressing yourself a lot. Serge Denim is one of my absolute favorite destinations when it comes to rings. Just some beautiful stuff, so I urge you to check that out. All right, then we've got the situation in your pockets. You're wearing not a lot of clothes, you're probably wearing light fabric, so anything in your pocket is gonna look awkward and is gonna throw off the look. So what you want, what you need, is a bag. Whether that's a tote bag, I think that's one of the best options for the summer, or a crossbody bag, I know they're not really trending anymore, ask me if I care, answer, I don't. I think they're still cool, so I still wear them, and you can keep something light in there, just your phone, your wallet, your keys, just to keep your pockets empty and clean. And just try and stay away from anything that's like strapped, that's heavy. So a crossbody bag is fairly light, but like a backpack or a messenger bag, because when it gets hot and it's heavy, it's just gonna be a lot of contact, and once you take that off, your fabric's gonna be wrinkled and sweaty, and it won't look good, so in terms of looking your best this summer, try and avoid those and try and opt for something that is handheld. It's not great for your back, granted, I'm well aware, a backpack is your best option, but it's gonna make sure that your look stays perfect. Then let's talk about footwear. I think my favorite footwear for summer has to be espadrilles. And not just any espadrilles, something a little bit more elegant, something suede, something leather, because you can wear them to the beach and you can still wear them to dinner if you want to. They're ultra versatile, they scream summer. Some of them aren't the most comfortable, but if you find the right pair, then I think they're a great, great choice for the summer. We at Ankari Floors are dropping ours in just a couple of days, so if you guys want to cop yours, feel free to check them out on the website. And while we're on footwear, let's talk about something else. When you're heading to the pool, what do you have on your feet? Is it just a pair of dirty old sandals or flip-flops? Like your Adidas, like Adiletten für alle Deutschen da draußen? Like your, the, the classic German Adidas slides? No, I think you should, once again, consider this, okay, this is your outfit, so look for a nice pair of pool slides. And once again, I'm gonna plug my own brand, not because like, hey, I wanna make money. No, like we design these products because that's what I think you should have, I should have in my closet. So check them out, they're on the website right now. And last but not least, while we're already on the topic of pool slides, let's talk about what else you wear to the pool. And that would be swim trunks. So it's the summer, please invest in a nice pair of swim trunks. Don't just make it like a boring black one. Like, don't get me wrong, of course it's fine, but if you wanna express yourself, there's so many fun ways to wear swim trunks, from photographic prints to geometric patterns, all the metrics, to just bold colors. There's so much fun that you can have with swim trunks, but most importantly, don't forget about the fit. Just because you're wearing swim trunks doesn't mean that like fit goes out the window. Fit is still king. So make sure that you get a nice tailored pair of swim trunks for yourself and I actually am getting rid of a bunch of mine and I know it's a little bit weird selling like my old swim trunks but several of them are new. Most of them I've worn like once or twice because I get sent so many which I'm grateful for and blessed for but I wanna post them on Instagram, everything that I am trying to get rid of. Some of them are like $300 trunks. I'm gonna sell them for a fraction of the price and then donate the proceeds. So make sure if you don't, follow me on Instagram and make sure to check out my stories because that's going live within the next week or so, probably. And that's all the talking I'm gonna do for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, this wasn't really like the outfits themselves. This was like the base knowledge on how to approach building a wardrobe and then all the things that go with the wardrobe, specifically accessories and also your skin. So thank you guys for watching. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. I haven't asked for one of those in a long time. And subscribe. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I caught myself with the classic YouTuber thing. Um, sub to my channel if you're not already, okay? Because there's going to be more cool content. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you very soon with the next video. Until then, as always, stay dapper, y'all. Bye.